Hello! If you are a subscriber to this channel, just know that you have my eternal gratitude. If I ever become rich, I will get every single one of you a $25 gift card to KFC. And for those of you who are not subscribed, well, that's your business. The other day, my fiance was telling me a very boring story about somebody that she knows is getting married. I'm not exactly sure. I wasn't really paying attention, but it had to do with somebody that she knows that's getting married. And I said, well, that's a mistake. And she was like, whoa, whoa, she did that. Wow. Are you saying that when we get married, it's going to be a mistake? And I said, of course it is. Marriages and relationships in general are like anchors, right? You got to carry this big old anchor around everywhere you go. And then she was like, whoa, again. And she said, are you saying that when we get married or even now I'm an anchor to you? To which I replied, of course you are. All I'm doing is maintaining logical consistency that relationships are anchors. However, just because it is an anchor doesn't mean it's bad. Sometimes you find an anchor that is just so brilliant, the way it's crafted and designed, that you just want to be with it despite the fact that it is an anchor. It's got gemstones, it's bedazzled, it's gold, it's white gold, it's platinum, it's silver, whatever it is you like, there's something about this particular anchor that you just don't want to live without it. So I let her know right there and then that you are that kind of anchor to me. Her being unable to mount a sophisticated argument against that logic, just let it go because she knows I'm right, which tends to happen roughly about three times per year, four times during leap years. Little known fact about me, I am rather well known in Mexico. In fact, down in Mexico, they call me El Basurero Parlante. Now, I don't know what that means, but it sounds pretty hardcore, so I'll take it. Being a truck driver, I have a lot of time to just sit there and think. Now, I don't think about important things or how to make the world better, none of that rubbish. I think about strange things, weird things, odd things, things to me, or things that don't make sense to me, I should say. For example, one of those things is that there are people, well, before we get to the people part, let's talk about trains. Most of us know what a train is, and for those that don't, I'll give a brief summary. A train is a vehicle that travels along a predetermined path. A railroad, that's what it's called. They're called rails, they're on the ground. You know where the train's gonna come from and you know where it's going. Uh, it could come from either direction, but it only has two ways that it can come from. So, guessing you have a 50-50 chance of being right or wrong. Those are pretty good odds. And naturally, once you figure out which way it's coming from, 100% you're going to know which way it's going. And despite this kind of knowledge at one's disposal, there are people out there who still manage to unintentionally get hit by trains. To me, that is just fascinating. One would think that it would be almost impossible to get hit by a train knowing where it's coming from and where it's going. Nearly impossible to get hit by one because you can see it. And if you can't see it, you can hear it. And if you can't hear it, you can definitely feel it. Anybody who stood by a set of railroad tracks when a freight train or a metro or whatever is going by, you can feel it in the ground. You could feel it in your body. You could feel it in your bones. It's just tons and tons and tons of steel rolling all over the rails, and it makes a very strong rumble. And despite all of these things, 
people still manage to get hit by trains unintentionally sometimes it's somebody that's just walking along the tracks which right off the bat sounds like a really bad idea and then there are those people who drive across thinking that they're gonna beat the train and they obviously do not but all this got me thinking exactly how many people get hit by trains per year in the United States and how many deaths and how many injuries so I did a Google, and according to the U.S. Department of Transportation, there are about 5,800 train crashes each year in the United States. And it goes on to say most of them occur at railroad crossings. This results in 600 deaths and 2,300 injuries per year total. Of people getting hit by an object that they know where it's coming from they know where it's going there's a 50 50 chance which way it's coming from and somehow they still manage to get hit by trains staggering so do me a huge favor don't walk along railroad tracks i mean you could walk along them but don't walk in the part where the train's actually going to drive through because apparently I don't know, man. There's just something kind of phenomenon. I wish Unsolved Mysteries was still around because I'd give those dickheads a call real quick and say, hey, you need to sort this shit out. When I was a little boy, maybe about anywhere from 9 to 11 years old, there was one time I was driving with my mom from somewhere. I think we were coming from the mall or some store or something like that. This memory is so vivid in my head. And in front of us, we were stopped at a light. It was a very long line of traffic. Um, there was a Jeep, a Jeep Wrangler. I remember this, it was green in color. We're just sitting there. Uh, there was nothing particularly special about this Jeep, but you know, I'm always, always been the type of person that just kind of looks at my surroundings and just, you know, pays attention to it and ponders about it, whatever irrelevant unimportant when all of a sudden the person driving this jeep opens his door leans his head out and tosses his cookies but he didn't just simply toss his cookies i mean the sound of it the way it came out it was just like living art he was all like Ugh. the sound of it was truly the piece de resistance of what a vomit sound should be and it just flowed from his mouth like the most magnificent waterfall you have ever seen right there in traffic in the daytime in front of anybody this guy did not care he needed to go and ever since that day i have really wanted to own a jeep so now every time I see a Jeep Wrangler, I think about that guy and I wonder where is he now? I hope he's doing okay. Does he look so brilliant and amazing and sound so great every time he throws up? Or was that just a one-off? That guy was just so cool. And by owning a Jeep Wrangler, I don't own one, but I've always wanted to, I think I could maybe elevate to a level of coolness over some period of time to that guy however there is a slight problem when it comes to jeeps and owning jeeps and that is well i'm going to let my friend terrence explain it in a scientific way they are pieces of shit right you are terrence jeeps don't have a really fantastic track record when it comes to reliability not like they used to they are rather rubbish vehicles i mean after all they are made by chrysler a company who famously along with general motors a decade ago went begging to the government to save their companies because nobody wanted to buy their crappy cars but it's a jeep and that guy was driving a jeep therefore i don't care to an extent, it's not something I would buy unless I had a disposable income, and I don't. But if I did, the first thing I would do is run out and get 
all of you guys your $25 KFC gift certificates and then I would go buy myself a Jeep Wrangler. But not having a disposable income, I'm not willing to go out and buy something that's notoriously, how do you say, rubbish. It might be okay for a while, but then the warranty's gonna run out, it's gonna break down on me, and then I'm gonna be hosed. Besides, I don't necessarily need a car right now because most of the time I'm in my truck and when I am home, I just use my fiance's car. So, <clears throat> my voice was doing something weird there, my apologies. So, since I don't have a disposable income and I don't necessarily need a car, but I kind of want one, the reasonable thing to do is to get a car that's got a strong pedigree, that is known for its brilliance and its reliability, and that, of course, is a Nissan Stanza. Mm -hmm. 